Hello, and welcome to another Chicago Reacts. My name is Colin, and today I'm watching every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion in a nutshell. Uh, this is, of course, from Bricky. Uh, I had previously watched a few... How many did I do? Two? At least two. Three, four? Oh, we, we watched several videos uh, of Bricky explaining the various uh, factions of Warhammer. Um... That was a lot, a lot of information. Uh, certainly interested to see what he's got to say about the Space Marine Legion. That sounds fun. Um, so, yeah, if you if you haven't seen the other Warhammer videos that I reviewed from Bricky, go ahead and watch those. And uh, also be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you want to continue seeing more videos like this one. So, with that being said, without further ado, let's bring up the screen here and... Give it a go. To the people on the internet, <clears throat> the time has come. The, the reckoning, reckoning begins. begins. Your boy got himself a shaker cup. <sighs> After many, many months of shilling gamer subs like mad, my favorite thing to do, we have ourselves a goddamn shaker cup. It's here, the official Bricky Waifu Shaker Cup. Do you see the gal on here? If it's, if it's not great at focusing, I'm sure there'll be a thing in the background. Uh, skater, put a thing in the background. Long white hair, absolutely. A bit more toned, abs, obviously. Bikini, hit it. Legally yeah, distinct a, mark on the face. It's a buff cartoon character. Of course, she <laughs> wants you to do the diddle thing, maybe, but most likely to serve in a glorious army. Legally distinct? I think so. The Bricky Shaker Cup is available now, and you should get it while it is hot. But if you're thinking, Bricky, what should I put in this? Well, how about my top 10 favorite gamer subs flavors? From number one to number 10, all of them incredible, but listed regardless, and an addendum for those that are caffeine free. This Shaker Cup is available now in the description of this video. You may use code Bricky as well at checkout to get a discount on your order. A massive amount of profits goes to yours truly, and a huge thank you to Gamer Subs for sponsoring and for getting me this beautiful, beautiful cup. Go out there and get it. I'm gonna take one more sip for the camera, slow it down, throw some sexy music in there, and I'll see you guys soon. That was a good gulp. I don't know. I'm tempted to get one. Now, I'm, I'm assuming those <laughs> weren't all, they're not protein shakes, right? The pina colada and those flavors that I saw, they're just, they're just drinks, like ice drinks, powdered ice drinks, I'm assuming. I've not, I don't think I've actually seen those other than like, you know, Kool-Aid or the Gatorade powder stuff that you can get. But yeah, go and get you one. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently stuck in the walls of the most prodigious school in the Imperium by punishment for falling asleep during class. God bless the Skola Progenium. Many of you have come across my Every Faction Explained video. Firstly, thank you. Secondly, we are here to dig a little deeper. Space Marines are the quintessential poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. When people think 40k, they think Space Marines, but there are many types of space marines formed from 20 separate legions. We are going to rattle them off in order and give you a quick rundown of each one. A disclaimer, like in my Every Faction Explained video, this is a mix of accuracy and memes. If I say the Salamander's Legion specializes in hugging children and petting puppies, they aren't exactly doing that, mostly. I would like to pet this creature. But you can infer <laughs> that they care about civilians and are a bit kinder than the average space marine. A space marine being a genetically modified super soldier that's had a million new and terrifying organs shoved into them, refrigerators strapped to their bodies, and are so far above the average human that they are referred to as demigods instead. Each space marine has a father, unlike you, a primarch, which is basically an even bigger space marine that was forged in a lab 
uh, by the god emperor of mankind, that gigantic golden dude you see everywhere, who is both the leader and now the martyr of humanity. The Primarchs are his 20 sons, built in a lab who lead 20 legions of space marines, who are their sons. Not from a lab, but rather a dissection table, giving them the powers and skills of their associated Primarch via a gene seed. Okay, but was that actually like a picture of Darth Vader getting assembled? Like, that that looks like, well, I guess we got the skull over here in the top right that looks more Warhammer themed, so I guess not. But it, you, you see what I'm getting at. I mean, we've already established that there's going to be a lot of similarities, you know, in, in design at least for Star Wars. But you can forgive me for thinking that was Darth Vader, right? Come on. Let's keep going. Powers and skills of their associated Primarch via a gene seed, a special organ carrying the genetic makeup of their Primarch and, you know, their seed. So if Jagatai Khan of the White Scars has the genetic makeup that wants him to go really, really fast, then his sons, the Space Marines, also want to go really, really fast. I should note that I am only referring to the legions this time around. If you're interested in sub-factions like, let's say, the Black Templars, then it's not going to be here. However, I do have a excellent Black Templar video. I'd argue it's probably the most accurate one I can think of. It goes through the whole lore, everything about them. It's a very long video, and I'll put it in the description. Just look up Black Templar video in the description. You'll get what you need. And now, with the easy explanation out of the way, let us begin with our first Legion. When that's the round table, we dance where we're able. Dark Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. <laughs> Primark Lion <laughs> L. Johnson. A duelist. A knight. A real act. I'm guessing by that little, little quirky thing he did there. That, uh, loyal is, is an ironic description of, of this group here. For those of you who, who already know, that's going to be my guess, but let's see what he actually has to say. Asshole, I'm not going to lie. The single word descriptor, <laughs> paranoid. The Dark Angels are our first legion, hailing from the death world known as Calabam. Calabam! Calabam. Lion L. Johnson is what happens when you try to make the side profile Chad meme into a gen- Hope I didn't blow up anyone's eardrums with that if, if you're wearing headphones. I don't know how loud that's going to show up. Anywho. Sorry. Genuine character. He is a master tier duelist, a brilliant strategist, and an overall dick. There are few situations he isn't prepared for, and few fights he isn't ready to lead head on. This makes the Dark Angels have a very Knights of the Round Table vibe. They look like the Knights of Old with these large suits of power armor, often donning robes and hoods. Their names also follow this. They have like Ezekiel, Azrael, Belial, Samuel, <laughs> and so on. That's However, the common right thing associated with Dark Angels are the Fallen. A part of their faction that turned traitor against the Imperium, and they are very heavily trying to expunge all knowledge of them from existence. Fallen? What fallen? Never heard of any fallen. Do you know about the fallen? We're gonna take you away and mind probe you to make sure you have never heard of the fallen. They definitely don't exist. And if they do exist, which they don't, we will find them even though they don't exist. They love their interrogations. They thrive in it. Lionel Johnson is a scorched earth policy sometimes, and it's given to his sons in force, which makes sense considering that when the lion heard of a chaos primarch on a homeworld different primarch, whose mom was there, he was like, Let's nuke it. The Dark Angels are a special group where they formulate themselves into three different factions. The Deathwing Terminators, slow moving, tough phalanx. The Raven Wing, fast jet bikes and flyers. And the Green Wing, which is your standard Marines. They are a jack of all trades, but not in the sense where they're good at everything, but rather they have a lot of things that are good at specific things. Like instead of 20 people that have a multi-tool, they instead have 20 people with gigantic power tools for every job imaginable. If you like being suspicious about everyone and everything in your surroundings, but you also like to have a whole lot of deep night type lore, run the Dark Angels. The One Piece! The One Piece is real! Our second Legion is a special one. <laughs> You can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. The Emperor's Children, Allegiance, Traitor, Primarch. Did we like, did we skip over the, the second one? Because it was so mysterious. What's going on there? Second Legion. 
everything in your surroundings, but you also like to have a whole yeah, lot yeah, of deep okay. night type lore, run the Dark Angels. The One Piece! The One Piece is real! Our second Legion is a special one. <laughs> If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go what? to 11. The Emperor's Children. Am I, am I gonna find a further explanation on that somewhere? What is, what's up with the Second Legion? Someone, someone help me out in the comments. I, I'm befuddled. I'm lost. Something, something weird and psychedelic and mysterious happened, and I, I need answers. In the meantime, let's keep going. Allegiance, traitor. Primark, Fulgrim. <clears throat> a perfectionist, an artist, a sneaky, sneaky snake. And the single word sneaky, descriptor, sneaky, perfection. The Emperor's children are all about the pursuit of perfection. Perfection in all they do. Perfection in war, in artistry, and perfection in every other aspect of life. Their armor is a gleaming pink, purple, and gold. Their ships have spires Ooh. of gorgeous marvel and gold statues in their honor. Fulgrim is a man who believes the pursuit of perfection is the goal of all things. And I mean, look at him. Can you truly tell me that he is not perfect? The hair, the features. As Primarchs go, he is the one you look at and if 40k had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back this is the fucking guy which is why this pursuit of decadence led them to the evils of chaos yes emperor's children are our first chaos legion and not just a normal one one devoted to you guessed it slanesh the prince of ah, pleasure slanesh. god of unspeakable slanesh. excess slanesh. the emperor's children in their pursuit are now horrifyingly mutated beings through slanesh's great oh will god. they torture and maim to feel perfection through pain they screech and attack with sonic weaponry for perfection through sound and they slaughter aiming for perfection in war fulgrim himself lost the battle against hmm. Slanesh as a demon sword cross and uh what does he do in the pursuit of the perfection of peace hmm it, it does that not you know fit into his pursuit of perfection but i guess we wouldn't have a game without without or no we wouldn't have a game with peace right there we go Anyhow, let's keep going. Corrupted his mind and transformed him into the sexy man he was, into the sexy snake he is now. A demon Primarch, corrupted and bringing his legion's will by himself. As far as Emperor's children go, they are some bad people. They do horrible, horrible things to anyone to and head? everything. In fact, they're such trolls that their battle cry is for the Emperor, despite being horribly mutated and corrupted. If you've ever taken a little too much of a drug, or or maybe the music at a concert was too loud and you didn't bring any earplugs or whatever the reason, you just take all those things and you dial it and you dial it and you twist it and the knob breaks. And that is the Emperor's Children. God. I think this might be the or tangential related to the group in the uh, uh, factions video that I reacted to that was giving me a major um, uh, pinhead. Uh, what's what's that movie? It's not Pinhead, but it's uh, they just made a remake of it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna waste any more uh, of the video here, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Pinhead. That thing. If I'm sure it's gonna like suddenly pop into my head, and uh, I'm sure I'll 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 blurt it out for you, um, because it's probably kind of drive me crazy. Um, but yeah. Give me, give me kind of those vibes. The sort of taking the pleasures to the extremes, um, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting group to have in a game like this. I think. Yeah. Let's keep going. I is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. The Iron Warriors, Allegiance, traitor, Primarch. 
Percherabo, a warlord, a siege smith, an incel. Single word descriptor? Siege. Continuing the trend of our Chaos Legions, we have the Iron Warriors led by Primarch Percherabo of Olympia. To understand the Iron Warriors though, one must first understand Percherabo. A man so bitter, coffee beans run for light. A man who hates the world and everyone in it, who never got recognition for his deeds, who hates his brothers and hates their accomplishments even more. Someone so laughably petty, so incredibly bitter that he goes full circle to becoming likable. Why? Because he's competent. The Horus Heresy. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. We it, didn't talk about the Horus Heresy. Intermission. My my question though with that guy, I'm not going to go back. Um So I saw you know they had the the shit coming out of his head. That was like, you know, the machinery attached to him. He was he's one with the machine. Uh does that include the rest of that armor that he was wearing or is he able to take that off? Just out of curiosity, because I saw like some of the other uh, legions earlier. There was like a, a segment of them getting the suits put on briefly. Uh, but what about that guy? He looks. He looked like he was pretty. My brain is just wanting to say sewn in there, but that's. I mean, you... metaphorically sewn in. You know. So let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, we're on intermission, but uh, we're we're nowhere near halfway through this video yet, so we're gonna keep going. So Horus was the Emperor's favorite son, right? You know, so the Emperor walked into his room. Horus said, Dad, Dad, I just gifted 150 subs to Amaranth, and she said my name a ton, and she loved me for it. I really think that I might get to meet her one day. And it kind of played out something like this. Your feelings for her are not real. They are real to me! And then it started playing out a little bit more like this. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. So it takes the last drop of my blood. Yeah. So Iron Warriors, cool. the Horus Heresy <laughs> wouldn't have gotten shit done without Peter Turbo. Imagine an entire faction that is the personification of brutal industrialism, where you serve the Legion until your dying breath. You build and you kill and you siege and you kill and you literally summon demons just to take them and trap them in machines and use them as cannon fodder. This is a thing they do. They summon demons to trap and use as shock troops. The Iron Warriors are siege cool. warfare incarnate. They are heavy weapons, they are tanks, they are turrets, and they don't die. They hate Imperials, they hate Imperial Fists. Do you need a pacifier, Iron Baby? No! No, I don't! They are bitter incarnate. Percherabo and the Iron Warriors don't serve the Chaos Gods because they like them. They serve them because fuck you. Come on, guys. Let's go. Not another speeding ticket. I'll fight it in court, but I don't think they're going to accept gotta go fast as a medical condition. The White Scars. Allegiance, loyalist. Primark, Jagatai Khan. A speed demon, a plane strider, a roast god. Single word descriptor? Speed. Hailing from Chagoras. The White Scars are all about speed. They love melee, but they love it even more when they are doing it from a motorcycle or land speeder. Or... Honestly, just running really damn fast. The White Scars are honestly forgotten about a lot, and that's lore accurate. They are a legion that doesn't seek the recognition or glory from the combat they engage in. They engage in it because it is their duty and because they love it. Not in the insane slaughter enjoyment of loving it, but in the thrill of the fight. They are known as the laughing killers because they ride into battle with a smile on their face and a chuckle in their throat. And as you can tell by their Primarch's awesome. name, they are <laughs> Mongolian based. Move horses and replace them with motorcycles and land spears, and that's your style. They are heavily based on the old times of Genghis Khan, and consider this is 40k and everybody's evil. You know, that fits. The white scars are actually physical scars on their body, going back to their heritage on Chagoras. The Khan himself is kind of a dickhead, but, but a reasonable one. He thinks ahead, he's intelligent, he's patient. He is often underestimated because he doesn't scream his accomplishments from the rooftops, which is what makes him and the white scars dangerous. His skills are kept at bay, only to be truly shown when the time is needed. The white scars are a forgotten legion often, but that doesn't diminish their accomplishments. All it does 
is surprise those who underestimate them. Speed, awesome Mongolian vibe they got going on. And if you really like to stab people, that's the white scars for you. Shameless thirst break. This is dog. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, bitch. The Space Wolves. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch, Lehman Russ, a Viking, a savage, the Undertaker. Single word descriptor, Wolf, 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 wolf. There's so many goddamn wolf units. Skater, how many units in the Space Wolves Codex have the word wolf in their name? The Space Wolves are the sixth legion and hail from Fenris, a frozen wasteland of a world with their Primarch, Lehman Russ. I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Space Wolves because it's very obvious who they are. They are the second most like obvious what their shtick is legion in the 20 legions besides the world eaters. When you look at the space wolves behind, what do you see? Do you see Vikings in space? You've yes. done it. Congratulations, you have found Vikings in space. But they have as much in common with a regular Something Marine like as an old day Viking with, with like a Roman soldier. You see, as a space Marine, your body is so enhanced that you filter out poison and so you can't get drunk. The space wolves distill a special mead out of a horrible poisonous plant that would kill a normal human so they could get drunk. They have fangs in their mouths. They sometimes cannibalize their enemies. Yeah, yeah they, sometimes they eat people because they gain knowledge about them from there and about battle plans. The Space Wolves are savages. They're raiders, they they're Vikings. But despite all of this, they are loyal to their core. Lehman Russ is an egotistical guy who just shouts stories and tales of his accomplishments everywhere they can. But at the same time, he was so damn loyal that instead of gunning down his foes, he hit him with a fucking backbreaker to show his devotion, his devotion to wrestling. If you want Vikings in space, you found it. Play the Vikings in space. We're gonna build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. The Imperial Fists. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primarch? Rogel Dorn. A builder, a phalanx, and he needs a hand. Single word descriptor? Fortify. The Imperial Fists are led by Primarch Rogel Dorn in their homeworld of Inuit. However, they themselves are actually a fleet-based chapter, with their main source of recruitment coming from an enormous moon-sized ship called the Phalanx. The Fists are a chapter you think of when you think of duty. They love to serve. The love to serve and the inability to be moved. Rogel Dorn is an architect, a master builder, and basically a rock in brain and body. A lack of humor or ability to lie shows that he is as blunt as the weapons of war he creates. Not the swords he makes, but like blunt, strong weapons. The fists are the same. Take your archetypical American Marine style look, a buzz cut, a hard sense of duty, and then throw in some power armor and a love for building defenses and you have the Imperial Fists. They are immovable. When you find a spot, they're ready to defend. You, you can't breach them. Their knowledge of defensive warfare is paramount. Without them, the Horus Heresy would have been so much more effective, but thanks to their insane and immovable tenacity, the Imperium lives today. And let's not forget that Iron Warrior and Imperial Fist rivalry. Want to know why the Iron Warriors are so bitter? These guys are the reason why. Hey guys, bring the thing. Where is he going? <laughs> hey, hey, that could have killed me. Hey guys, we missed. Get another! <laughs> Dorn and Perturabo are basically two sides of the same coin. One is just a bit more level-headed and got better jobs. If you want to be defensive, to be good at everything space marines are good at, bolters, heavy weapons, vehicles, you want a classic military fighting force, start fisting. I am having a very bad day. What? This, today, is one of the worst days. Oh boy. I do also just want to say, the, the little cartoon, the little snippet thing that was giving me Monty Python vibes. I don't know about you guys. Just give me Holy Grail vibes. Uh, I want to see the rest of that. Who? Let me know if you was was that also something from Bricky or if not, let me know if there's a whole video out there where I can watch it. That looked funny as hell. Please and thank you.
Oh boy, here we go. The Night Lords. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Conrad Kurz. A sadist, a vigilante, the Presso Espresso. Single word, Presso Espresso. Fear. The Night Lords are my favorite legion, hailing from the Stromo and their Primarch, Conrad Kurz. They are a traitor legion from a planet known as the Sunless World or the World of Endless Night. Nostromo is nice. a horrible hive city that is known for being host to some of the worst gang violence, murder, and working conditions around. The only thing keeping the population in check is the suicide rate. The Night Lords followed in the footsteps of their Primarch, a man who believed in a twisted sense of justice and that the only way to make humans compliant is through fear. Fear. The Legion's lesson has been lost on them as their ranks were repopulated by gang members, murderers, arsonists, torturers, and other words I can't say on YouTube as young as 12 years old. Murderers before they were even teenagers raised to become demigods. Now fear is what they sow and flesh is what they reap. The Night Lords are Gum. They are the exact opposite of all other legions. They torture and they maim and they flay because they think it's fun. They run away often so they can come back and kill you with more numbers. They prey on the innocent and the weak. They kill normal civilians because it's easy and flee any battle where they don't possess overwhelming odds. They are the antithesis of normal space marines. They are scum. One time, a world did not comply to their demands, so they raided one of their ships and brought it into atmosphere. The crowds cheered and clapped as it appears that they had won the battle, and the airlocks opened, and the skinned and flayed bodies of the crew were thrown down in the populace. In other words... <laughs> A legion of gangers and criminals. Add together a heavy Slavic influence to them. And you've got my favorite faction. You have not done the dishes for five years. So embarrassed when people come over here. What does it matter? You bring them over, you kill them. Vampires don't do dishes. The Blood Angels. Allegiance, loyal. Primarch, Sanguinius, an angel, a vampire, a dead ass oh. motherfucker. Single word descriptor. Blood. The Blood Angels are Blood. Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primarch, Sanguinius. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale, with one of the best Primarchs, one beloved by almost everybody, a genuine angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the hands of the traitor Horus before the Emperor's eyes. The death of their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness as their gene seed malfunctioned and created something known as the Black Rage. The Blood Angels degrade over time, experiencing something called the Red Thirst, which gives them a genuine vampiric thirst for blood. As their minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't see it as that. I mean, that that's awesome. I, I was hoping that with a name like, like Blood Angels that they were actual vampires. This is a close second, I gotta say. I mean, it might actually be better. I think this is better than them actually being vampires. This is, that's quite horrifying. So, well done. Well done. I think I'd, I, I would play these guys. These sound fun. Oh. I would play as these guys. They see themselves there at their Primarch's demise with Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. That space marine over there, that chaos space marine, that's Horus. Kill him. That orc war boss over there? Horus. Kill him. That Tyranid swarm? 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Kill them all. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? Horus sabotaged your toaster. Destroy the toaster. Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This slow, debilitating disease takes over the blood angels, and it gives them this angelic, vampire, and Catholic-inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use That's psychic just... powers to See, okay, if they're not actual vampires, but they sleep in, co in coffins and drink blood, like... Might as well just, they, as a vampire, they might not have the sharp teeth. There, It doesn't seem like they have some of the other powers that they have, but they, that's basically a vampire. Uh, it's cool, don't get me wrong. Also, I'm just now noticing this picture here. 
did we learn nothing from um, Batman and Robin? And what was it Batman? Not Batman Beyond. Batman. You know, Batman Returns. Something like that. Where they introduced the bat nipples. We got nipples on the armor here. Did we not learn anything? I mean, see, now I'm, I'm like looking at it even closer. I'm like, what does maybe does it work a little bit better with the sort of, I don't know, angelic, artistic kind of like ancient marble sculpture kind of aesthetic, which I I, I guess is what the designer of the bat nipples was going for. But I think it, uh, maybe does it work here? Does it work here? Maybe. I'm still gonna say no. I think because the nipples are like square and they look they look like rivets. Really weird, janky rivets that look like nipples. Voting no. To thumbs down. Thumbs down. Boo. Boo on the armor nipples. Sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through, and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. I got a diesel and that's where we're going to pause this because it's a long video. We're about halfway through here, uh, and we'll pick it up in part two. Surprise! This is a two-parter video. I didn't mention that at the beginning, but it is. So, yeah. So far, so good. Enjoying the education. Like I said, I think I think I would play as a vampire. The the Blood Angels. That sounds like a fun group. So let me know in the comments what group uh, you'd want to play as, or if you've ever you know played any version of this game. What a uh, legion or faction did you play as? Let me know. Alrighty. Well, until then, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in part two.